Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today we got something cool. We're taking a little bit of a break from quadcopters and flying machines and we're going to be reviewing a ground Baja buggy today. This is a 110 scale electric sand XL buggy by VRX Racing. And this is basically a four wheel drive. It's kind of like a knockoff of the Yeti. I don't know if you're, if you're familiar with the Yeti truck, but um, it's a really popular one. And it's kind of like the same thing. It's very similar, but in a cheaper version. It's four wheel drive, it's ready to run. It's um, electronic power, 2.4 gigahertz, just pistol control. And it has um, all steel type shafts, so you're not gonna be breaking any components. It's called the Octane XL. So what we're gonna be doing today is a full review, unbox, um, inspection setup, and a bash test, a run test, bash test, and this all inclusive in this video we can see here that we have um, steel planetary gift diff box and front universal drive shafts. This thing's gonna be hopefully very durable. We're gonna put it through the test and see just how durable it is. So let's get started. Right, so it looks like the version I got, I have a checkbox under the Octane XL EBL version. There's also an EBD version. And the EBL version is supposed to be the cream of the crop version with all of these LiPo and brushless electronics. So let's just look at that really quick before we open the box. So this one's supposed to have a balance charger, a 2S3250 milliamp hour LiPo battery, and a 3650 3000 kV brushless motor. So that's gonna make this thing pretty darn powerful. powerful. Sealed RX case, 45 amp brushless ESC, and long drop shocks. So hopefully, maybe those are oil filled, I'm hoping. So anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and slide off the top here and check out what we got in this box. Cool, so we are greeted with the truck. Just sticking out the top, look at these nice, large, foam-filled, really pliable um, rubber tires. It's gonna be, it's looking really good. And yeah, it looks like I am seeing a LiPo battery pack here, so it looks like I did get that version. So, taking this thing out of the box, looks like we just pull this straight up, take these side guys off here. He's just holding the tires. Doesn't feel like there's anything in there. And then there's just a box on the side for like the controller and the other parts. So there's the truck. And then in the bottom here, we have an instruction manual. And also this is just like a spacer and then a silica pack, which are good to keep around because um, I like to put these in my bags, like for my drones and stuff, um, just to keep everything dry and the moisture out, like the carry backpacks and bags. So I like to hang on to these, of course, keep them in a place that's not gonna be around kids and stuff or little kids because you don't wanna eat these. These are actually poison. Anyway, there's the truck. It's looking really good, really nice looking truck. We're gonna get to it in just a second, a little more in depth. The first thing I wanna do is open up this other box it came with. And this is gonna be the um, controller. And it looks like the charger and a couple of other things. So that's everything in that box. There's the charger. Let's open this up super quick and see what we get. So it's a 2S, 3S balance charger. Nothing super special, but it does look like it's rather good quality. It looks like they seal this whole bag. So we actually have to open that up real quick. And there it is, so it's a 3S, 2S, 3S battery charger and it's got the plugs there for charging. And it's just gonna be charging directly off the balance port of the battery and then there's our plug-in for our power cord which also comes in the box right here. Okay, so I am seeing that I got the China Euro charger plug so I'm gonna need to use one of my adapters really cheap little adapters that slip on here. I don't see one in the box on this one, but if you did get the this kind of plug, they have these really cheap adapters that just slide right on top to make it US compatible. The only other thing in here is the controller. So let's just take a quick look at this and then we'll look at the truck. So we do have our uh, 2.4 gigator antenna. It does look like it's going all the way up there. And there's our wheel for turning and it does have this nice sticky rubber on it 
nice look in here. Of course, that's going to be your um, forward acceleration, neutral, brake, and reverse. It's a FSGT FlySky pistol grip controller. And let's see what kind of batteries we take. So we're taking one, two, three, four. So this is going to take quite a bit. This is going to take eight AA batteries. And that thing just slides and clips back in just like that. On the back here, it looks like there is a little charge port. So I guess if you have the right plug, you could put rechargeable batteries in here and go ahead and charge that thing up um, with that with that charge plug if you wanted to. And there's a DSC port. So it looks like this could be a trainer port. If, um, if you had a trainer cable and another one of these controllers, you could link it up to your kid or a younger, you know, somebody learning and you could actually help uh, train them on the controlling. The only other thing it has here is this cover here and let's see if we can focus in on the controls. It looks like the steering and throttle reversing servo switches are here. Power LED. So here's our steering trim, throttle trim, and then this gives us a steering rate. I'm not showing really any throttle rate but we do have a, a rate of steering so you can turn that down if you want to have less or more steering and then of course this is the power off and on switch. So that's everything there for the controller. Just kind of a plain Jane controller, but if it works, hey, it's, that's fine. Another little package, we have an antenna tube and a little bind plug, so if you need to rebind the truck. All right, and now for the good part, let's take a look at this big old Yeti type of rec replica truck. And here's the truck. So check out these tires, man. This has got uh, not bead locks. You can see that there is some glue in there around the tires. Um, we do have just a lock nut holding on the wheels, and these are plastic wheels, but the tires do feel really nice and grippy and rubbery, and I am feeling some foam in there. Um, it feels like maybe a coned type of foam down in there, so the edges aren't really um, foamed out, but when you push a little further, the foam starts in there a bit, and I do feel some foam right in the middle of the tire as well. And same thing, you get a big old spare full size tire on the back. No fake tires here. And we can see that we've got body clips on top holding the whole thing in place. Cool driver in there, body clips on the front. And the cool thing about this is it's got these giant oil filled shocks. So there they are. These are giant full aluminum. These are not plastic shocks at all. It's looking to me like this is full black aluminum. And then we have these um, thumb adjustments for the spring tension, just a screw spring tension. And there's our stainless steel shaft, there's our black big spring, and then up on the top, there are actually aluminum caps as well, where it ties into the shock towers. And then we can see the uh, steel tie rods, all steel tie rods, steel drive shaft here in the bottom. So there's not really an upper arm. The upper arm is just basically the tie rod up there. And then we have this lower H arm, plastic H arm here. But it all does look very durable, where we can hear the servo working. Looks like we're gonna get some great articulation here. Look at that front articulation. Looks like the bottom of the frame is gonna be scraping if it's all the way up. While we're at the front, let's just check out the bumper and stuff. So the body does kind of overhang the bumper a little bit of course you could push that behind the bumper if you wanted to but it's just like a plastic built-in type of bumper there's two screws here and two screws on the front and it does look like it's going to give it great forward smashing front protection looks like this is a collapsible type of plastic bar in here that's going to smush down when we hit things and soak up some of that shock so pretty cool, just turning it around to the driver's seat cockpit here. Um, you get two drivers in there, so that's neat. Pretty detailed drivers. They've got like seat belts, molded steering wheel, helmets with stickers on the helmets already pre-installed. Kind of neat how we can see the shock coming behind the driver for the rear shocks. And look at that amount of shock adjustment. That's a huge amount of shock adjustment. Look at all those shock holes there. So you can move these shocks around as much as you want for more or less articulation. This is kind of like, um, I'm not sure exactly what you call it, but it's kind of like a cantilevered sway bar type of suspension where you can see that we have this bar here that's hinged. And we also have these uh, drag links, I think is what you call them in RC terminology. You can see that these are coming off the main bottom of the frame and coming back to the rear axle. And look at all those holes in the drag links. So you have all this adjustability there too for your um, shock adjustments. It looks like it's in the farthest one 
to the back from the factory, but you can adjust that as you see fit for it looks like more travel. And speaking of travel, here we go. So let's go ahead and do kind of a um, suspension little articulation test. And look at that articulation. That's pretty crazy. Kind of from the side. There we go, just pushing it all the way up. And it's going up much further than what the front can do because it is a solid solid axle. So that's a crazy amount of articulation. And I can feel that these uh, shocks are oil filled. So we're getting this really good dampening. Let me drop it here real quick and you'll see just how good the dampening is. So from a couple inches to a drop, look at that. So that's what you're gonna get from uh, good oil filled shocks is that just ability to soak up all the little bumps and the drops. Cool, so flipping it over to the bottom, looking at the bottom, there's the bottom H-arms, a nice little uh, half tub chassis with uh, everything looks like it's gonna slide over the rocks really good. It looks like it is um, possibly a combination of metal and plastic on this um, center drive shaft going to the back. But again, the gears in the back are gonna be metal and as far as the drag links go, these guys are really nice and thick. They have a really nice slide ability here on the sides. And it does look like the axle is pretty well protected because it's below the drag links. Um, so when the suspension is actuating here, this axle is actually up above these two. So as far as, you know, large rocks, it's just gonna scrape past. Of course, smaller rocks are gonna get scraping in there but that's just the nature of the beast anyway it looks really good this rear axle is looking really beefy and durable really solid um, here's a couple of other braces for the drag links the rear too so we've got these braces we've got these drag links here plus we have those kind of um, articulating which are kind of hard to see but you can see them there these little hinged links as well to also help with stability I don't know if you can see the action of those, but you can see that there, how it's um, how it's kind of compressing like a little elbow there to help everything, the stability and everything. Cool, so I think that's kind of pretty much in depth on the outside of the truck. Let's go ahead and take off these body clips. I don't see any extra body clips, so make sure you hang on to these guys. Body clips are also very cheap, so of course you could just get extra body clips. So this one doesn't really hinge up. The whole body just kind of comes off. So you can't really do any hinging like some of them. So you're gonna have to take all four, four of them off. And there's the inside, just a real quick look at the inside of the body if you wanted to know what that looked like. It looks like a very durable truck. The whole roll cage looks like it's gonna be really durable. Anyway, getting under the hood, there we go. So we can have a nice view of these large bore oil-filled shocks. They feel really nice and smooth. And you can see how much those things are compressing. Plastic shock towers, really long body posts with a bunch of adjustments here for uh, the body. So you have the ability you know, to adjust how high you want your body. There's the speed control. So it does look like it has a blue anodized heat sink. It's got a 45 amp sticker on top of this fan. So it does have a built-in fan. And it looks like there's a couple of capacitors there in this shrink wrap tubing. There's an on off switch on the other side, which brings us to this nice purple motor. So this is a brushless motor, really nice looking leads coming out to the speed control and there's the motor plugs spinning it back around and we can see that the receiver box is completely sealed and of course this is where we're going to put that tube in for our antenna they give us that black tube so that'll help keep it up and it looks to me like if we did want to use that receiver tube for the antenna we're going to have to possibly poke a hole in this body i'm not seeing any um any hole up here where the antenna is going to be coming up so we might have to poke a hole in that and then we have our servo it looks like a really high torque this is saying it's a e3003 servo it does look like it has a servo saver right there on the front what i don't see is any type of uh, slipper clutch and usually there aren't any slipper clutch in these cheaper versions um, of name brand RCs. But what happens is with four wheel drive like this, there's usually the differential will give and so you don't really need the slipper clutch unless you're really hammering it. But we're gonna kinda hammer it and see how that does if anything binds or breaks. It looks like everything's pretty beefy so we shouldn't have that problem. And really the last thing to touch on is the battery. So 
A couple of nice pre-installed battery straps right on the back um, rear of the center of gravity here. And here's the battery. So it's looking like a hard cased um, LiPo. This is labeled as a Team Enrich Power 3300 milliamp hour 2S 25C battery. So kind of probably a pretty generic one. It's got Dean's connector here and there is the balance plug for 2S. Should be about an hour to charge through this balance plug. And the battery tray does feel pretty durable. It's just like a plastic tub tray here that where we can easily slip in the battery. Cool, so that's pretty much the whole buggy in a nutshell. We can actually see those shock mounts a little better. That's an enormous amount of adjustability there. Pretty awesome. But it feels like it's gonna be really good. So here's a better look at that rear kind of elbow here to help the suspension. And you can really see how it's working here when we push it down. And it is connected through this metal rod. Anyway, so just really quick, I've got the manual here and it's got this cover sheet on it. Looks like this is the truck version cover sheet. They make a couple of body styles. So that's the truck version. Here's more of the sand buggy, dune buggy version that I got here. And what I wanted to see was just, um, shows you some tools here that you're gonna need if you're working on it. I wanted to see if it can take like 3S to 4S power. I guess that would actually be on the ESC, electronic speed control. So if I zoom into it here, we can actually see that this speed control can take two to three S LiPo. So that kind of answers my question without even going into the manual that this can take three S. Okay, so the two different versions, I got the Octane brushless. There's the brush ver brushed version as well over here. And it kind of tells you the maintenance. A pretty good instruction manual for like a Chinese product like this. Battery safety. It also gives you exploded views on the shocks, tells you how to open up the shocks and put the oil in and everything. There's the gear differentials. So a pretty good manual. Here's more exploded view, views of the whole truck. Wow, parts list. So if something breaks, you do have the option to order all the parts. So it looks like they have practically every piece. You can see page by page, we've got all these pieces. Here's all the shock components, all these screws. So if you wanted to, you're covered on replacing parts. Pretty much it looks like they've got everything. But anyway, that's the manual and that's the truck. So without further ado guys, uh, let's go ahead and charge this battery up. Get this truck out there. So let's get out there and run this thing. All right guys, so here we are with the VRX Racing Octane XL. Ready for the drive test and to simulate kind of how it would be for like a neighborhood basher, I'm just gonna test it on, you know, pavement, sidewalk, curbs, grass. The grass is kind of brown right now just because it's summertime and my sprinkler system isn't really working. So pardon the brown grass. And it's also really windy right now, as you can see from the tree. But this will be a good test um, regardless. And also we're gonna be hitting some rocks here. There's a few rock session sections on the curb and a couple of little jump areas. I like to just test, you know, small kind jumps but at least it'll give us an idea of how it handles small jumps, rocks, and all these other environments. I got everything charged up, got fully charged batteries in here, fully charged battery in here, and what I went ahead and did before we get started here was um, I had to pop a hole right in between this passenger driver's legs for if I wanted to put that antenna tube on, and then I had to pop another hole in the roof, and so you can either do that or not. If it flips over, it may scrape this off, so that might not actually be a good idea to put the antenna up here. Um, so what I'd recommend doing is maybe just not poking that top hole here, just poke the hole where the drivers sit and just let that kind of sit like that a little higher. It's going to be kind of bent over just a little bit, but it shouldn't matter that much as far as range goes. So I'm going to turn on the controller first. And the way we do that is pop off this lid and then just turn this on right here, that switch. You're going to see a couple of lights, green and red there. And then right in here in the body, just above the motor, there's a, a switch that's stuck. Just push it forward. And that thing is on and ready to go. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that the trimming's done right. So I'm going to kind of face it out from me. And we can see that our throttle's working, our steering's working. And we can see that the steering is a really high tor torque servo. It's, it is turning those wheels really um, quick 
and good right when it's just sitting on the pavement. Some trucks have a hard time doing that. So this is doing well. And so what I want to do is flip open the top here and just drive straight forward, kind of slow. You can see how it's going to the left a little. So I want to trim that out. Man, this thing looks like it's going to be really jumping over some jumps, man. <laughs> I can already tell. So I want to go down to my um, steering trim and I want to go to the one all the way on the left here. And I'm going to trim it just a little to the right. There we go, that's straight. And then if we um, use our steering rate, if I turn that, yeah, if I turn it to the right, it's basically taking out the steering. And if you slowly turn this knob to the left, it's going to give you more and more steering. So I'm going to turn it all the way to the left so we have our full range of steering. And then it feels like the throttle trim is already pretty good. And it seemed like right at zero, the throttle trim was already good. So I'm just going to leave it at zero. Close this bad boy up and we're ready to go. So of course reverse is once you've pressed your brake and then you press back again, you can go into reverse. You can see it there. And then of course gas is just pulling the trigger in. So let's do a couple of uh, speed tests first. This is again, this is 2S power. So not, this will take 3S, but we're not on 3S. So we'll get a little more power with 3S, but we're just gonna test it how it comes for now. Okay, so full throttle from a dead standstill stop. Three, two, one, go. Wow. So that thing will lift up and just about flip over. That's pretty awesome. Let's try that again. So from a standstill to full throttle now. <laughs> so the tire on the back is actually being used as like a wheelie bar. I can't believe it's giving us that much power off of this 2S battery. That's pretty amazing. All right, cool. So this thing is made for being like a rock racer. So it's not made for really crawling, but you can do some medium crawling. But it's made for going fast and bumps and rocks and curbs and stuff. Let's do a full throttle kind of turn here. Okay, so that suspension is really soaking it up and keeping it on the ground. You see how it's not flipping over? So that extra little elbow cantilever deal okay and there's our motor torque you see how it's pulling up the right wheel that's just because um whoa the motor's torquing in a certain direction so you can see when we turn right we're going to get that lift up and flip on occasion but when we're turning left we don't get that because the motor's torquing the other way so it's feeling good Wow, the differentials and everything is working great. Let's see some high speed runs. Wow, so the right front wheel is even lifting up um, just when we're even at speed and giving it throttle. You see that? Wow. So we're getting some massive motor torque here. But that's full speed. This thing goes pretty quick for what it is. Whoa, and you can pretty much, look at those on-demand wheelies, even at like five miles per hour. Just over speed to do a wheelie there. <laughs> wow, that's great. See that? So if you don't, if you're still, if you're rolling, but you're not going too fast, you can do. Wow, brakes are really good too. That was full brake. Oh my gosh, I'm loving this thing so far. Full throttle, full brake. Really good brakes, guys. Look at those brakes. All right, so that's pretty good on the speed runs. Let's just do a quick little range test before we start hitting the rocks and the curbs and stuff. So I'm gonna go all the way to the end of the cul-de-sac here, to the road. Still pulling a little to the left. I'm gonna trim that out in just a second. Still in control. I don't wanna go into the road and get run over by a car, but I'm sure this will easily have control. And that's about two, 300 feet. Full throttle coming in. Full brake, oh yes, it doesn't flip over forward. That's great. So really liking the suspension so far. These oil filled shocks are doing really good. The only negative here in the suspension right now is, and the power, is that um, torque roll is what I, what I should be saying, calling it. Wow, you can even do like a hop. 
if you let off. Okay, anyway, <laughs> let's get to bashing. So I will be um, timing this run and have it pop up at the end of the, of the video. So let's first start with a curb. Let's see if we can get over a curb here. Man, that's pretty, I can't believe how much power this has for a 2S and speed. This is amazing so far. Let's hit it straight on first at this curb. I don't wanna have a rock right in front of it. So right about here, this is just a full size curb here. And let's try to kind of creep over it. Whoa, so it does clog a little bit. This is a sensorless motor. So we're gonna get a little bit of clogging on low torque. So there, that's what I wanted to do. I just wanted to get the front wheels up and over and then just try to get the rear wheels over, going slow and then fast. Let's try slow first. So it looks like it's not gonna get over if we're going super slow. Let's try and give it a little bit of momentum like this and then floor it. Yeah, it'll get over. That kind of stuff, just be a little careful with hitting the, the transmission and differentials. It seems like it's all right, but that kind of stuff will eventually strip any kind of differential without a slipper clutch. So it can get over a curb straight forward. Wow, it's just soaking it up. Let's see at an angle if it has an easier time going slower over a curb. So we're gonna hit it at an angle here. Yeah, so we're getting some cogging. So definitely a little bit of a negative there. Oh, look at that articulation. Oh my goodness, that's great. So imagine if this thing had like a super slow speed for crawling. It would be really nice, but just the setup it has right now with a brushless motor and a sensorless motor, you can see that when I, I'm hitting something, you can see when I give it full throttle, it just can't, doesn't have the torque to do it. Even there, it's it's um, cogging out. So you're gonna need a little bit faster speed doing things. Can't quite get up that, even at an angle. But you know, with a little bit of speed, you can get up stuff. So not the best for getting up curbs. Not quite. But what it's meant for, what I should be doing instead of trying to get up a curb is going over these rocks and kind of bashing over them. Let's do a couple jumps here, right over the rocks. Oh, <laughs> really nailed that rock. So I'm gonna try to do a really pretty hardcore bash test here and all this stuff. Let's try to come through the rocks this way. Right through. I don't wanna go too fast. So the cogging. Yeah, so no, no torque really, unless you're at speed. That's too bad. Thought I was gonna have a little more low end torque. It's kind of geared for high end gearing. So you're gonna have to be going like this fast to get through stuff like that. Let's see if we go a little faster if we can get over this curb. There we go. Okay, so far so good. Still going good. Oh, little flip, flips right back over. Okay, so you just gotta be at speed. This is considered now, to me, a rock racer. Cause you gotta be going fast like this. But it's gonna get over stuff, no problem. Looks like the four wheel drive's working great. Let's try a little jump here. Get over on the neighbor's yard real quick and then jump through this. Yeah. So the jump's no problem. Turn radius is really good, actually. Oh, that's interesting. You can see that the front, the front now is gripping more than the rear for some reason. Let's see what's going on here. Did I already break something? Wow. Well, I think I may have already broken the rear, the rear gear, guys. Now look, the front's gonna spin and the rear's just gonna sit there. See that? So, 
That's the weak part of this truck. And there goes a the wheel. <laughs> okay, so now we lost the wheel. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, here's the nut. Just wasn't on super tight. So maybe that's the problem. Let me go ahead and try to put this wheel back on and tighten everything up. Okay, so the gears don't look stripped. Interesting. Everything actually looks good in here, so... Curious to know what in the world is going on here. What may have happened is... One of these drive shafts slipped out. Or something because I'm not actually seeing any stripped gears in here or maybe the gear spacing um, loosened up a little too much interesting well let me try to put this back together see if we can possibly finish this review okay guys so we're gonna try this again as you can see I took the whole rear diff apart there in front of the camera in the garage and couldn't find any strip gears, so I'm not sure what the heck the problem was. I went ahead and put some blue Loctite on there, so hopefully they don't really come off again. Um, hoping. So let's go ahead and give this thing another run. Do a little bit more bashing. And see if that happens again with the differential and if the wheel falls off again. And then we kind of know what to expect. Yeah, so I'm getting... Power back again to the rear diff. I don't know what the heck that was. No gears inside of it were stripped. So maybe for this one, don't try climbing curbs and really jacking up the rear like I was, you know? Just keep it, keep the momentum going and don't squeeze it too hard on the low torque and binding and stuff. Otherwise, you may have that problem, but it feels good now. I'm not giving it full throttle, but I can feel that I've got power to the rear with no apparent issues. Sorry about the wind. It's like super windy today. So let's just go ahead and I haven't charged the battery again. I'm just bashing off the same battery. Oh, <laughs> that was right into the front wheel. Looks like everything's good. So I'm just gonna keep on going for it. Kind of bashing around. So it really does soak up the rocks pretty good. Let's try my infamous little ledge test here. Let's see if we can kind of launch over this thing. Add some speed. Yeah, so we can get over stuff really easy like that. Let's get a little bit of a better view. This is a hefty truck, actually. There we go. Oh yeah, and we're getting through high grass, no problem. Let's try the other way. Yep. So what I'd recommend is when it goes up like that, don't give it throttle when it hits the ground on its rear end, or you may have that problem. Like I said, I don't know what the heck that was. Maybe one of the, do you see that little cogging there? Maybe one of the axle shafts got pulled out a little bit or something, and it was out of its um, planetary diff is what I'm thinking, but no gears strip somehow, so. Anyway, so a little bit of, not really crawling, but rock bashing like this, keep some speed on it, you know? Look at that, just slide right over, big stuff. No problem. Feels like the diff is still good. But you can see the cogging when I'm hooked up on something in the front. You really just have to take it easy on it to get over. 
But it will get over stuff. That's that's good to know. Boom. It's feeling good. I'm waiting to I'm waiting to feel that front end break loose because of the rear. Let's have a little check here. So I'm gonna lift up the rear and you can feel the front grabbing. I'm gonna lift up the front. Well, the front's still slipping a little. Maybe it's something to do with, maybe there is some kind of center diff in here. I'm not sure. The rear is still pushing. It just feels like it gets a little weak after a while. So, keep that in mind. Yeah, it feels like already the, the front is spinning more than the rear again. And I'm not able to wheelie. Remember in the beginning, I was able to really just pop wheelies right at the, um, Starting line, now watch, full throttle. Yeah, so it's doing it again. Huh. I have no idea what that is. So, and that's why these reviews are important. So you guys know what to expect. I can't stop this shaft, just to let you know. Drive shaft. I can't stop it, so it is something in here. It's still going a little wonky. Not sure. I did kind of pack it with some grease. Man, but I love the suspension on this. Woo! Pretty awesome. Whoa, so it will flip. Right turn. See that? It wants to flip almost. You can almost do two wheel. A little harder to flip on the left side. But the right turn, it will want to flip because of that torque roll. So super easy to get over these rocks and stuff. Boom. Let's just see, let's, let's just exhaust this battery and just really see, you know, how much abuse this can take and if anything actually breaks. I don't think the rear diff actually broke, to be honest. I think something's just giving way. I have no idea. Maybe something to do, like I was saying, with the axles. Oh, just nailed that front and took that rock down. You can hear that speed control going. You hear that in there, the fan? So the fan's working great. Huh, now it feels like the rear is engaging a little better. So something's, um, something's kind of slipping in and out with the, with the rear end. Let's go in the grass again. Hopefully I don't lose a wheel. <laughs> Let's try this jump. Let's see if we can jump this right here. Get some speed up. Yeah. Not bad at jumping. Doing a little bit of Baja here. Feels like the rear is engaging. I am really, really pleased with the brakes on this thing though. It's feeling good. Nice. And I can't believe how much power this has for 2S with how big it is. That really blows my mind how much power this Octane XL's got. I mean, I know it's brushless and stuff, 
but uh this big of a truck i've never seen one have this much power with with 2s cool so there's some jump in there let's take it over to these steps little step transition thing down over here at the back of the house and let's give it a go here go down these steps of course no problem and let's come up Ooh. yeah so you gotta have a little speed coming up but it will do it has no problem getting over stuff if you've got a little bit of speed let's try that again a little faster yeah it just basically flies going down and let's come up with some speed here once we get over this first one Woo! yeah no problem whatsoever a little bit of long grass no issues a leaf in there let's fly it down these steps now go <laughs> oh, that was like full throttle caught up on a tire let's go back over here this is some really crazy grass there in their backyard coming on up bom, 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 bom. nice Yeah. Full throttle. Not yet. Oh. So if you really want to, the cool thing is if you really want to soak up, um, if you're not really doing big jumps and you really want to just soak up all this little rock and stuff, the cool thing about this is loosen these spring tensioners right on the shock tower with your finger just unscrew them and it'll make the suspension even softer so you'll be able to to soak up stuff a little better cool yeah i'm still able to wheelie going up so not really sure what's going on Oh yeah, easy to get up stuff like that. Oh, that was a pretty good bash. Let's see if we can get through this. So there's the cogging. It doesn't really have that low end torque until it gets rolling a little bit. Oh, it's managing though, getting through stuff. So there's a, there's a prime example. A little bit of a hill there and full throttle. <laughs> there it got up, but you don't just don't have that slow, low torque. It does engage after a bit, but all of a sudden. Yeah. Oh yeah, just soaks up coming from whoop, ha, back on her feet. Okay, well it looks like the wheels are staying on now that I tightened them down really good and put the lock tight. Let's go over the curb and watch how smooth the transition is. It just like soaks it up entirely. Let's do full throttle right through here onto the grass. Wow, usually what happens when I do that is the car or truck hits the rear end right on this bump of grass and ends up flipping over forward, but this one's got so much travel that it's able to actually soak it up. Let's try that again and see what I'm talking about. So this bump right here is where I usually hit and flip over forward at full speed. Full throttle. See how that just sailed over and 
It did hit a little bit. Man, these brakes are awesome. Woo! All right, well, now that we took apart that pumpkin and put it all back together and Loctited the wheel nuts, hey, it's a whole new beast. I'm liking it. I just don't know what that rear end diff thing was. No idea. If anybody knows and has this truck, chime on in. Oh, ooh. Nailed the fence there. Oh, again. <laughs> so re reverse is very slow. It really locks you out of any kind of torque in reverse. Looks like we're still steering okay after that big hit. Now oh, we're just still driving straight. Okay, cool. Oh, that was a full throttle right turn. It's gonna flip. Go watch a full throttle left turn. Oh, it's still flipped. Okay. I guess if you have enough momentum, it will. Whoa, there's a nice little jump there. Let's try that again. Yeehaw. It's a good little spot. Nice. So definitely a backyard basher. I can see this thing doing really good in rock, dirt, sand, any, really anything you can throw at it. Oh, battery's getting low it feels like. This is full throttle. Let's see if it has a cutoff. I'm keeping it full throttle now. Still going full throttle, hard right turn hard left there it goes so it cut off no it's still rolling I really am hoping that ESC can shut off but you should know that you're too low on power by the time it gets going that slow so you really want to stop I'm just for testing purposes I'm just seeing if it's got an ultimate cut off but it doesn't look like it is cutting it off unless it's hovering right on that voltage cut off and just making it go super slow that's still going all right well i'm going to stop it there and let's go ahead and run through a pros and cons for the octane xl there's a good example of that articulation that's it's insane so that's the first pro is just check out this articulation man the thing is it's built to just soak up crazy stuff so let's do that again so from the rear view, there's some grass around the grease just because I put that back together and there was some grease on it. So rear view, that's max articulation. And that's really good. That's like maybe, I wanna say, what is that? Like 45 degrees on the rear of articulation. And then on the front, if I push one wheel all the way up, I wanna say that's maybe Let's see, that's pushing it all the way in there. That's maybe about 30, 35 degrees. So the rear has really got that awesome articulation. And another pro is it's got full aluminum oil filled shocks, big bores, and you can easily adjust the tension of the springs with these screw caps. You don't have to take anything off or slip any spacers in. So that's a big plus when you're out bashing and you want to adjust your settings and stuff. Maybe a little bit of a con would have been cool if they would have given you a couple more, you know, um, wheel nuts, lug nuts, especially if they're going to be flying off. So definitely screw them on a little tighter and lock tight them or they're going to be flying off like mine did. Um, so the little con, actually kind of a major con, but I can't figure out what it was, was the rear diff problem where remember that where it was it felt like something was stripped but it wasn't so something may have separated somewhere so I took the whole thing off took the drive shafts out couldn't find any strip gears or anything put everything back in and it seems fine for a moment there it felt like it was doing it again but then it went back to normal so I really don't know what that is again if you guys can chime in and uh share your knowledge if you if you have experience with this buggy 
and share it with the rest of the people that are watching that'd be great the 2s power is very very good i wouldn't i'd recommend not to put 3s on this thing probably because of that issue with remember we um we're having that issue with the diff possibly i think 3s would probably just make that worse so don't want to do that um maybe if you beef up and figure out what that problem was add some spacers maybe 3s would be no problem another negative would be that cogging so you remember seeing it when i was going like really slow and if you're trying to get over something that's right in front of you it's just going to not be able to move the motor motor's not going to be able to move so you're going to get that jumpy cogging um until it like engages and then you get this crazy amount of power which isn't really usable in low crawling situations so keep that in mind this is more of a rock racer fast to medium speed just flying over rocks and jumps and driving fast and stuff but it really did soak up the stuff good and um after that fix i really do like it guys so and as far as the damage goes let's kind of assess a little bit of if we see any damage so just normal scraping wear and tear a little bit of grass stuck in the seams here which is totally normal um and of course just scraping on the bottom here the trailing arms here the links are a little bit scraped up but that's what they're supposed to do i don't even see any scraping on the drive shaft so it's it's really doing its job at protecting the drive shaft here i don't see any scraping whatsoever here or even really on the yoke here i don't see anything going on there a little bit of scraping on the pumpkin there which is normal for the kind of bashing in the rocks we we're doing and i've flipped over a couple times and we see just a little bit of scrapage um, on the lexan which is normal for any rc car i would definitely recommend not bringing the antenna all the way up because if this thing flips over scrapes on the ground it does look like it'll shave your antenna off so keep the antenna down here poke a hole in the the mid cover here where the legs are of the driver and pull your antenna up with the antenna tube looks like a good way to do it or of course you don't even have to put an antenna tube up i mean unless you're really going for range you could just set that thing inside and you'd be fine up to a couple hundred feet but i'm really liking the suspension on this thing and um if i do some more i might do another review with some big jumps on this and we'll see how it does anyway guys i like i hope you like that review of the vrx racing octane xl little yeti i think this is kind of a yeti clone so I hope you enjoyed that review and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.